right then. Here are the materials. This is um, plain grey paper with a mount card over the top, which is great for making sure that the picture fits in the available space. And um, first I'm going to be using a nice soft pencil. This is, um, the softness is 6B, um, so that's really good and um, nice and it's easy to rub out. This is my trusty putty rubber, which I really like. Not least because you can knead it into a sharp point if you want to rub out something really small or um, use it in a nice ball. Then I've got some coloured pencils, which I will use for the colour on Catty. I've got an ink pen. This is a traditional dipping pen. So I'll be showing you how to use this later on in the video after we've done the pencil sketching. I use this ink. Um, it's waterproof. Dr. Martin's Bombay Black India ink. It's uh, yeah waterproof and um, really good. Nice, goes on nicely. And then just some water to dip my pen in. So I'll get that out of the way. Move those along a bit. Right, ready to start. So uh, first of all, I'm going to look at the shape of the photos we've got and think about how Catty's going to fit on the page. Now I'm noticing a really, in my main reference photo, a really nice rhythm where Catty's foot comes forward here like that. And it's a nice kind of curve. Catty looks as though he's just about thinking about maybe doing a little bit of yoga or something. <laughs> So I'm just trying to map out those big shapes and look at where things connect. If So if that was one paw, then it would connect through to another paw. They're about the same height. But I'm also looking for how this fits in the overall shape of the picture and making sure that I make as much use as possible as I of the um, available space on the page. So there's Catty's muzzle. And Catty, funnily enough, has got almost identical colouring to my cat, Mr. Sausages. So that's nice. Now, at this point, it's really easy to rub out the pencil, especially because I'm using such a nice soft pencil. So I'm not worrying too much about getting everything just right. I'm really looking for the big proportions and making sure, for example, that the head is the right size in proportion to the legs. I'm wanting to call that an arm, but it's not, of course, it's because catty is a catty. It's a, now I'm going to very slightly move this leg over here so that catty, whoa, actually, hmm. So catty's got the most beautiful tail, which I am going to put in. You can see on the other photo, catty's got quite a nice, quite thick tail. So I'm gonna do that like this and it's got a lovely bit of texture. We can uh, really have some fun with that later. Okay, so, and if you look as well, I think Catty has got a slightly, um, it's like pattern there on the paw. So I'm also at this point, just going to reserve, I'm just gonna turn this round and show you. So I want to reserve a little section here for the title. So what I'm going to do is track my hand. I use my finger along here so it works a bit like a ruler and it means that I can easily draw a straight line. So if I draw that there like that, that reserves that section for the title and then I will ask Wilf what he would like as the title when we're watching, when he's watching the, the drawing. Okay, so 
I need to make sure I don't go too near there because it might well say, my best guess is Wilf's catty. So I need to not come down too far with that leg. Okay. Right now, I think that although Catty is very slumped over, we could perhaps do with, can I rub that bit there? It's really nice to change things up at this point. It's so easy. I think Catty's face might be very slightly too big the way I've got it here. Let's see. Maybe actually I think what needs to happen is that shoulder needs to come up there. That leg is longer. That's better. Okay. So it's really worth remembering if you're correcting a drawing and you can see that the proportions aren't quite right, always stop and think for a minute because you've probably got several options um, of how to correct it. So if I thought this Catty's head was um, too big, I could either make the rest of the body bigger or make the head smaller. And it's really worth stopping for a minute to think about what you want to do in that situation. Now I'm just having a sense, just like I would with a person, of the centre line. And um, Catty's on a sort of almost facing us pose, but you can see a little bit more of this side of the face than this side. Let me move that down a little bit. So you've got a better view. We can. Right, and trying to look as well for what we call rhythms going across like that. I'm imagining a line like this. There we go, on the ears. Just making sure that this forehead looks about right, which I think it does, I think we're all right there. Looking at this space here, this patch, it really is uncanny. I can't wait to show Mr. Sausages this picture. I think it's his twin. There we are, right, just mapping in where the eyes go and the nose. And I'm trying to think of them as a triangle. So this is really good when you're drawing people. Try and look for if you can find a triangle somewhere, or a square, or a line, just try and squint a little bit at the shape and make sure you've got it the right sort of triangle. You know, is it, are those two further apart than that one? And then look at your subject, the thing you're drawing, and uh, check that you've got it looking right. And then I'm looking at this. I can see that that edge there isn't straight, but I'm not going to go to that level of detail at the moment. I'm just really looking for the big shapes. So trying to imagine if Catty was to step off the page, would it be the Catty that we see in the photo? Okay, right. Some wonderful texture to go on later. Now make sure I've got the, that's a lovely kind of loping sideways twisty pose which is a really good I think uh, Catty's a very good model. Now I'm just looking at this line here make sure I've got this straight. So in the photo Catty's ear is actually over here if you look so we've got a shape going on there's the leg coming like that. And then if you look at there, we've got a line here. And I'm just looking at the edge there and that there. So actually this shoulder here is going to come over a bit. I don't know if that's making sense. I'm going to have to fix this paper to the drawing board in a minute. 
Right, let's have a, another go here because we go up, in, and then out actually to the same like that. And then we have Catty's ear like that. Okay, so I had the tilt of the head wrong. Doesn't matter so much, but um, these things often catch up with you later if you don't get them right in the early stages. So I'm going to take the time to get it right. Okay. I can have a jolly good rub out towards the end and get rid of any marks. Right now I'm going to look. So I've got that. That's looking a bit better. Get the muzzle in. So the muzzle comes like that. Now, got quite a tip down here. And I'm going to, again, I'm looking at this edge shape. So there's the, muzzle and I think that here seam is pretty much vertical so there's a good clue sometimes what people do is um, think about the hands of a clock when you're trying to judge an angle so this angle here I would say if that's the middle of the clock that's pointing roughly to the 12 and that's pointing to about um, between the two and the three, probably at the two. So that just helps you be a bit more objective, not too distracted by. Right, and this one here comes over a bit more, I think, like that. Right, and I'm just going to check this grey patch here is the right sort of shape, like that. Now let's go back to those rhythms again and make sure because when Catty was made and cut from the original cloth the um, sewing process would have had a symmetrical ears so even if those ears have got a little bit um, distorted by all the love they still will be basically anchored in a symmetrical way on the sides of the head just like people generally pretty symmetrical in fact surprisingly um, symmetrical okay right so we've got that's starting to look a little bit better, I think. Put that nose back in, looking for the triangle again. Beautiful nose. It almost looks like it's made out of a sweet. I'm going to enjoy putting a highlight on that nose later. So, right, let's make sure we've got Catty's body the right sort of weight. And we've got a nice triangle, um, I think, I'm not quite sure what that is called. Is that a rhombus, that shape there? Catty's tummy. So here we go. There's the paw. That looks better. So when you take the time to get things in the right place, it's very satisfying if suddenly other things line up nicely. So I'm looking from the eye, just imagining if that continues down, I've got that shoulder here. There we go, and there's a little bit of fluff on there. Right. And um, there we go, we're coming in a little bit. So I had Catty looking a bit broad at the top there, and then a lovely 
sweeping arm here. Make sure they're the same level as they are in the picture. Got a nice kind of sense of the roundness of that paw there. And that joins up with this bit here. Okay, and then now we've got two bits there that aren't making sense. Let's see, what have we got? Now, I'm looking now at this line. So we've got the edge of the paw is pretty much under there. See how much there's a lot of kind of measuring. And this is the bit where if you get it right at this point, um, you'll be really laughing all the way to the finishing line. Because you won't need to worry about any of your measuring. After that, you've done all the hard work and the rest is just fun. Right now, let's have a look at, there we go. This one comes in here, down like that. Not quite as chunky as I had it. There we go. Right. And then because I've got this mount card, I can have a nice play with that tail and really bring it right out to the edge there. And I think that will give me a nice idea for the light as well. So I always decide at the beginning of the picture where the light's coming from. And because Catty's pose is like this, I've put his tail on this side and I'm going to do the light as though it's coming from here so the shadows are going to be here and that will balance out this tail I think right now I feel like this leg isn't looking quite long enough so let's just bring it up a tiny bit like that That nice curve. Generally, when you're drawing anything, if you look at it and you think something looks wrong, you're almost always right. It is wrong. And it, it really is a question of diagnosing, a bit like a scientist or a doctor. A doctor is a scientist, but uh, looking at analyzing where is it wrong and not giving up, not thinking, oh, I can't tell and making a guess. Try and really be patient and trust that if you look hard enough, you'll find it. And you might decide you want to do it distorted slightly, but at least then you're doing it deliberately. Right, so Wilf's catty, I'm just Tracking my eyes backwards and forwards. I think we've got that. We've got nice. I feel like the muzzle might need to come up a little bit. Yes, because the muzzle is actually slightly wider than the eyes. There we go. Right. And then just making sure those eyes are wide enough. Yes, they are. Okay. Right, I think we're just about there. So here's our first draft of the picture. I'm just going to go in with a few straight lines to make sure. The right volume feels like the muzzle is very slightly crooked okay right lovely so next step is the ink so we use our ink pen dipping and it's always good to have a sheet of paper to 
test your pen on before you uh, put it onto the picture. Right, so I'm just going to open that up. Okay, and then you can see this is actually a dropper here, like a pipette, but I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to dip my pen straight in and check on here. Now the first time you dip the pen it tends to be a little dry so it usually takes a second dip to really get nice and fluid. Right so do you remember I said the light is going to be coming from this side so I tend to start my lines with my freshly dipped pen on the side away from the light because that is the side um, where I want the thicker lines. Right, and I'm going to just rehearse that line before I do it because once the ink goes on it's not coming off. <laughs> okay, right now Katty's got some lovely texture up here. And let's check. So this is a really good chance to, ooh, right, this is okay. I can um, cover that up later. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, so we've got a really good chance to measure from the top to the eye. Okay, there we go. And so this is one of the uh, risks and pleasures of uh, working with ink, it's those happy accidents. Right, let's get Catty's eyes. They are beautiful, shiny eyes, and they are not perfectly round. They are a really interesting shape. So I'm gonna just color those in for now, and we will put highlights on them at the end. And that is when Catty will get that sparkle that I'm sure Wilf loves. Right. Okay, now we've got a little bit of shadow here. But I'm going to leave that for now because I think I'll do that with the um, pencils later. That bit of shadow. Let's get that muzzle shape. And see how I'm looking for, I'm not doing all round the hole in a continuous line, I'm varying the lines and these pens are brilliant for that. It's really pretty impossible to do a really constant line. If I was to use a, a normal pen or um, you know something like this, um, then my lines would all be the same thickness. But the nice thing about this is you get those accidents which make it so um, so interesting. Right, I'm not going to go right over the nose. I'm just doing that little bit where there's a bit of shadow and then getting that cheek. Okay, now we've got a bit of an arm coming in here and I haven't got much ink on the pen now so I'm doing this outside edge here where it's it'll be catching the light while I'm able to do these light marks. Got some nice folds in there just looking at that edge. Okay, and here's the Thigh coming in like that, and right, let's get that. Um, okay, so we're looking at these folds, there's a nice shadow there, and a few bits of texture here. We're going to have fun with this texture later. Right now, 
we're looking more for structure. I'm looking at the way these shapes overlap as well. Right. I'm not being completely slavish to the um, the way that Catty's legs are sitting. That this leg here is very close to the camera, and uh, I think it's slightly what we call foreshortened. So I am going to maybe tone it down a little bit there, and make it just slightly less uh, epic because I can see in the other, I can see what it's like in the other photo. It's pretty similar length to the body. Okay, and there we are. Right, now, even though in the photo there's quite a lot of light on this side, I'm going to work my texture um, of that lovely scruffy fur mostly on this side where the shadow so i'm sort of it's called turning the form okay and i can see it looks like there's a little uh seam here so we've got a very i'm just going to hint at it there right now let's look at this leg let's look how it goes Doop. that's easy So it looks as though Catty's got fur going up down to the sort of about this level and then pretty smooth on all the limbs and then a few areas where that fur hasn't really survived the um, exciting life of Catty. Okay, I'm just going to pop this on to make sure I don't stray outside my planned area. Trying to make sure I've got that there. Okay. There, right. So some of this tail, we have to allow for the fact that it goes round the back, but um, that's pretty much all the inking I need to do. I'm going to do some texture here. You can see already this line here is kind of disappearing, but we will deal with it later. I'll show you how to deal with those. And as the light is coming from this side, I'm emphasizing the texture on the other side rather than where the light is hitting it. Okay, now we'll have more there. So let's, I'm going to have another dip and then put in what we call some cast shadow. So the shadow underneath here, where the light will be causing shadows so where the light isn't going to be falling on Catty. And it's a really good way to make Catty feel solid. Really feel that Catty is sitting on that surface and relaxing. Or perhaps Catty is waiting for something to happen. Waiting for a friend, maybe. Shall we put a bit of, what do you think? Should we put some under there? I think a little bit would be good. There we go, under that bit of tail. Right, so we've now we've got some tail. Now I'm looking very closely and I can see a little bit of a mouth. So I'm gonna put a hint of a mouth there, but I'm not gonna put those um, bits of colour there. Almost little tabby areas. 
Okay, so I think that's enough ink and, um, oh, just put a few little bits there. A few little bits of texture. Um, there we go. And, oh, there's a seam here. I am always looking for seams because they're really quite uh, distinctive. Okay. Right then. So we've got space for Wilf's Catty title there that out of the way and I'm going to rinse off my pen so you can see rinse it off dry it off and then just um, hopefully that will dry in a second it doesn't take very long and then we'll be able to rub out the pen Okay, so the um, ink is dry now. So I've got it, this lovely putty rubber. It's so nice. And um, these are really good for rubbing out uh, fine detail, but also for rubbing out larger areas. So I'm just gonna rub and it's lucky all that ink is dry but I'm still going to be a little bit careful not to do anything too smudgy trying not to get dirty finger marks on the drawing either I'm going to go in a bit closer so you can see those pencil marks coming away can you see that So it leaves us with lovely clean ink lines. Let's just catch those last marks. It's really good to make sure that this graphite is completely gone so that it, um, it doesn't mingle with the coloured pencil that I'm going to use in a minute. Although Catty is rather special because Catty is quite a sort of grey colour. Although Catty has lots of texture and lovely features that we can put in and enjoy. I'm looking forward to using my yellowy pen on Catty's nose. We've still got um, got to try and keep it clean. Okay, there we go. So this is how it's going to look when it's done. There we are, like that. Okay. Right, lovely. So let's start thinking about colour, shall we? So looking at the overall colour, I think um, I've basically got a cream. Ooh, that's a rather a short cream. I've got a cream and a white. And I think I need to give this a bit of a sharpen. So um, different people like to sharpen with different things, but I sharpen with a Stanley knife usually. Um, there we go. And then my little secret top tip, once you've done that, is you can use a piece of sandpaper get this camera up a little bit so you can see there and that just helps to smooth out the edges in a really nice shape so there we go right already for Catty's moment of glory so Although Catty isn't exactly this colour, this is going to be my starting colour. So I'm 
doing what's called blocking in and trying to really think about also the light. So we're going to have the light coming from this on this side. So this area here, although it may not be that light in the photo, because of the way we're showing the light in our drawing, that's also going to be quite light there. And um, I'm going to be coming in over the top with some white and some grey, so not to worry too much if these colours don't look quite right. We're really just getting something to start with. And it's really fine to show the pencil marks. They don't have to be perfectly even. In fact, I'm using my old drawing board, which is um, itself has got a bit of, it, because it's wood, it's got a bit of a grain. So that's really nice when I'm drawing. Sometimes it comes through the paper and I get a little bit of texture from that. Right, now this is a darker colour, so we won't be doing that with this pencil. We'll put that in there. Right, check I haven't missed anything. Now we've got, I've got two greys, so I'm going to decide now which grey to use by testing them out. So I've got this grey, here and this is a different brand of pencil. So if you look at these, although they're both grey, they are quite different. I don't know if you can see, but this grey here is a rather more bluey grey and this one is a more of a, um, it's very like, actually like a charcoal. So I think I'm going to go with this warmer grey. as my base colour. I'm really enjoying those accidental marks that you get with the texture coming through from the board and the strokes of the pencil, the way it just happens to fall because they really add character. And Catty looks as though there is bags of character going on there, I would say. Sorry, I'm just going to turn my light off because that's not, let's go up a little bit. There we are, right. Hopefully you can see that. There, lovely. And Catty's tail we can see is grey. So let's get that in. And when you're drawing things with longish fur or hair, a top tip is not to make your lines your shading or it's called hatching, not to make your hatching lines too much in the direction of the hair. You can do some at the end, I think we'll be doing that, we'll be putting in some highlights with this pen here, but um, at this stage you don't really want to be going into the level of detail that would be Um, right, the level of detail that would be suggested by going along in the direction of the fur. If anything, you can almost just deliberately go in the opposite direction. Right, starting to look a little bit like Catty. Now I think it's time, I've been looking forward to this, we go for some of those really nice bits of 
laugh and let's get some of this. I'm going to go in with a darker pencil there, I think, or maybe some more ink at the end. Now this looks like we might have a good, let's get that. I think I need a stronger colour, so I'm going to resort to, I've got some very nice soft pencils at my side. Bring in one of those. So here's a, this is really a black. It's like a slightly warm black, but basically it is. And I, that's what I'm seeing here. I don't think that grey is going dark enough. A few places and like under here where Catty really is very dark. So let's get those right now before we go any further. Here we've got some shadow. Now let's have a look. There's a tiny bit of fur there as well, I think. A little bit of grey fur. And let's get these bits. Now this is called turning the form when you get it nice and dark as it falls away from the light and it really helps the toy look rounded. And um, Catty's foot here has got some texture. And here. And I'm going to go a bit darker here just to sort of show, show it tucking in under that leg. And then on this side as well, because this side of the tail is away from the light like that and it just makes that tail can you see how that tail suddenly looks 3d right and then also looking at the general overall shape of catty's head and this bit here is turned away from the light right then now We've got some interesting bits of texture going on, which we will address in a minute with the white pen. And then we will be going over one more time, possibly with a, a brownish pencil. I can see a sort of brownie colour in here. So this it probably looks the same to you. This is black and this is brown. This is a chocolate colour, what we would call a cool brown. I can see quite a bit of kind of brownie smudging here. That looks as though it might have been Catty's pattern once upon a time. Maybe Wilf can tell us. Yeah, I think Catty does look, maybe Catty was a little bit tabby there. I don't know. Or maybe it's just a... Uh, that Catty's been having a good life playing in some mud. Right. Okay, Catty, and let's look at your muzzle then, shall we? There we go, some bits here. A nice bit here. Nice bit of brown under your nose. Right, and I think we will do that yellow nose now. It's a sort of a pinky yellow. Makes me wonder if it actually it might be pink in real life. I'm just going to put a little, it looks like, it really does look like a sweet to me. There we go. So it's not too bright and it's kind of in between sort of pinky, orangey, yellowy colour. Go a bit closer so you can see there. Right. Now, our next thing is this pen. So this is, I use a Uni Posca pen and give it a very good shake. And just like with the ink pen, because this is ink, 
putting just test on there make sure that it's coming out nicely now this is the fun bit this is when Catty will really start to go 3D and have a sense of texture so all that holding back that we did earlier not putting the not going in the direction of the fur now is the time when we can go in the direction of the fur in fact I'm really looking to see as I'm doing this where the fur is kind of balled up into bobbles where it's increases and I'm going to put some longer we've got some longer bits here now these bits on the gray will be lighter later sorry they will be darker later I'm going to go over them it's going to get another another go with the gray pen so um, don't worry if you think this is looking a little bit bright it will be toned down but these bits here I'm going to emphasize because they would be catching the light although in the photo there's not a lot of light there to try and show the 3d shape of catty I am putting them in there okay right, let's go down this arm so this arm here this will really catch the light so just as I was keeping the darks on that side I'm keeping the lights on this side and just being careful not to put long long bits of fluff where they're not there because I'm sure Wilf would know if that was wrong. Now we've got a wonderful bit of weave showing here. So I'm going to do that with some dots of white. And then again, I'm going to go over that with a pencil. But it really, this really is a sign of a toy that has had an exciting life. There we are. Right now, let's get those bits of fluff there. And very slightly, looks like almost slightly velvety here. Okay, and some more fluff there. Again, I'm trying to keep it mostly on this side and looking now at the other photo at the tail. And I'm working from the bottom of the, the hair, is, it's called follicle. So I work from the bottom of the follicle to the top so that that thin line as it fades away goes to the end of the hair we don't get a stumpy bit of hair there we go now that is going to be toned down later as i mentioned okay and then this arm needs a little bit more light on it there just to really show the edge and here as well that will catch some light that thigh Okay, and then this one here will catch some light. Now we've got some lovely bits of tufty fur here. And they stop about there. And same here. Now we've got some more of that slightly textured fabricy bit here. Can have a bit of fun with that. And here we've got some bits of fluff. I'm not going to do too much on the tummy because I want that tummy to kind of go backwards and this arm to come forwards. So make that a bit lighter. Make sure I've got the roundness of the muzzle. So there seems to be long hair here and then some more short around the eyes. And I'll do some up here where it might catch the light on the top of the head.
and some highlights on that muzzle. Right, I'm going to put the highlight on the nose at the end um, and not going to do too many here because this is in shade. Just a couple just to show the roughness, make it look a, that nice shabby look. Right, let's move up a little bit and I'm going to put my big light on again. There we are. Right. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a minute to have another look at the photo and fine tune some of those bits. Make sure I've caught all the things that Catty's owner would know that maybe some of us wouldn't notice, but he will know if it's not quite right. I don't want that to be something that bothers him later. Nothing worse than a portrait that's not quite right because it would always bother you. <laughs> right, there we are. Now, time to go on again with um, more grey. Um, I'm wondering about possibly using this one. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so this is really creating a sort of evening out that texture in the areas of dark fur where I want the light to catch. So I want to show those bits of, you can see that, I want to show those bits of um, strands that catch the light but I don't want them to be white because if you look on the photo they're not actually white white they're um, just a lighter grey so I'm going to knock those back all over and um, you know go for the happy accidents go for the bits of rough pencil I'm not holding it right at the I'm holding it near the end so it makes it a little bit less predictable Same here. Notice I'm not just stroking along in the direction of the hairs, I'm going across like that. Okay, let's go up. Right, this is really starting to look a bit more like Catty now, I think. Let's get a little bit more shaping on that side. I'm going to go a bit darker there. here where that ear bulges. Cats have wonderful hearing don't they? I wonder what Catty's hearing is like. I suspect Catty's heard a lot of secrets. Right and that under there and here we've got a little bit of texture going on and there's some brown Got a bit of brown there. I think maybe we need a tiny bit more. Just there. Okay, and Now really just making sure those last bits of texture look right. Haven't missed any special areas. Got a bit of shadow here and a bit of shadow here. Look at those. Right, and I think this area here might be a little bit more 
there we go, so that it's not catching the light so much. Right, and then one last go over here. Again, knocking back this white. Looking a bit too clean there, Catty, I'm afraid. And I might even go for, I've got this lovely sort of warm, beigey kind of, I don't know what you'd call this. They call it warm earth. It's the name of the colour. I think it's the colour of a toy that's been well cuddled. Ah, spot a little bit of colour up here as well. Right now, this is really starting to look like beautiful catty. So I think we might do a few last dips with the ink pen. Speed this up a bit. Just to define where some of the pencil has made some of those really dark areas a little bit lighter and I'm wanting to make them really fix them again. Just the little areas of intense shadow and under here we have some shadow that could be emphasized and there's a fold here. Get that crease in. And here. So not all the way along, not too regular, just break up that edge a little bit. Put a little bit here, just to make sure that the bits which come, which we want to come forward, come forward, and the bits that we want to disappear into the background fall back out of your attention. So we're trying to think about the attention of the person looking at the picture and what catches their eye. So there we'll have that a little bit darker, make that tail really. Okay. And a few little bits of texture there we could do with emphasizing. Okay. Right, I think Apart from those last bits of detail where Catty will get um, his title and the shine on his eyes, I think he's done. Right, so next step he's going to go into the live show where I will do a bit more which I will share on this video and then we'll come in and say goodbye. Right, but for now, there's Catty. I will put this on so you can see. And space for the title there and for signing. Okay, thank you. Wilf, if you decide you want a heart, you're welcome to tell me. Right, I'm just gonna move that. There we are, right, now you can see, sorry. There we are, can you see okay? Right, so I'm going to write just catty here. So I'm going to start by writing it in pencil, knowing that I can um, lose that afterwards. And I've got a trick here to show you. If you want to draw a straight line and you haven't got a ruler, what you can do is you can run your hand along the side of the page, or if it's a book or something, and I've, I've Fixed, I've fixed my 
fingers in a kind of lock like that. So I can easily draw a line. And because Catty's got a Y, I need to have my title slightly higher so that there's room for the Y. And also, there we go, I need to make it in the middle. So it's really handy that I've got the mount card here because I can see Catty's exactly where Catty's name needs to go. Right. So I'm going to start by just using my putty rubber. Remember that? That's a very good friend. I highly recommend them. You can get them in any art shops, all sorts of brands. I find uh, they do vary a bit, so um, but they're not very expensive. So if you pop off, and I think they cost probably less than a good pencil, um, but you get lots of wear and use out of them okay so you can see i'll move that really close so you can see i've got the line ready and um as a friend observed i know you're watching hello it is a little bit daring to do this live with ink but um i know you're all friends so if i mess this up you won't mind and um wilf if i mess this up i'll draw your picture again but hopefully I won't, because I have done it a lot of times before. I've written a lot of titles. So here we are. So I'm going to use the paper. Remember I said before, this is my ink pen here, my ink pot. And I'm going to take the lid off and dip the pen in. There we go. Give it a wipe. OK. Oh, I'm just going to stick my other light on. We have a bit of a fun and games with our lights. Right, this is a warm light. Can you see that was a cool light before and now it's a warm light. Right, and um, first dip is always, the pen was really dry, so I'm gonna dip it in again. Okay, lovely, right. Hopefully I've got enough ink there. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I'm gonna write Catty here very carefully. Live on air. Here we go, you ready? There we are, Catty. And I'm going to use a pot of water. Looks dirty, but actually it's not that dirty. It's just got a little bit of ink in it just to rinse off my pen. And I'm gonna dry it with a tissue. Because it's uh, otherwise, because the nib is made of metal, can you see, I don't know if you can see there that it's a metal nib. Um, if I don't keep it dry, it'll go rusty. So it's really important to look after your equipment. We'll get that water out of the way before we have an accident. So now we have uh, one, two more things to do. Um, you may notice if we have a look, I'll show you again the reference photo. Have a look at Catty's eyes. Can you see that beautiful shine on Catty's eyes? So that's what we're going to put in now. So to do that, I use this white pen. And can you hear, it's got a ball inside and it's got liquid. So again, because it's a liquid pen, I'm gonna be very careful. And I'm going to use my tester sheet again, just to make sure it's not blobby. They're generally not blobby, these pens, and that it's coming out right. And then we're going to go for it with Catty's eyes. OK, maybe I can come in even closer. Can you see that all right? OK, right. Prepare for Catty's eyes to come to life. Here we go. If I can do that so you can see. One, two. OK, where the, can you see where the light catches Catty's eyes? And let's have a check at that reference photo again. Make sure we really have a good look at Cathy's nose because it's a very special pink and yellow nose. Right. Is Cathy's nose going to get a little bit of highlight action? There we go, because it is shiny. Lovely. Right. Okay, Wilf, your picture is nearly finished. Last thing, can you remember what the last thing is to do with a picture? Anyone remember? 
and give you a clue it's down here you can do it either side and this is one of those times when I'm really glad that I've got the mount card because sometimes if you don't do that you can sign your picture and when you frame it it chops the signature off or even worse chops off half the signature and then my name would be Ga. right so I think randomly I'm going to go for this side and it's always a good idea just to practice so even though I've written my name lots of times before I'm just going to check okay I'll check that the pencil's working and I know where it's going to hit the page right here we are so can you see that There we go. Right then, Wilf, your picture is finished. I'll move that up a little bit so you can see. There we are. So there is Catty. I will rub out Catty's the, the, the pencil there when it's dry. And I'm going to just say a big thank you to everybody who's been watching it's been so nice i've really loved having you all here it's lovely to see the chat i can watch the chat afterwards I'll, i'm apologizing to anybody i haven't managed to answer joseph and william are here lovely to see you thank you for joining again and um oh nonny is actually a polar bear so we'll be drawing nonny next week fantastic and thank you oh tilda is going to subscribe that's wonderful and then you can find um the um the show lovely oh i'm glad you like the last dance room fantastic so it's really nice to hear from you all i love it and i know that some of us are going to be going back to school um next week some of us have already been in school but i just wanted to say good luck to anyone who's going back to school next week and um, we're really looking forward to seeing the, te the children are looking forward to seeing the teachers leon do you want to come in because you're going back to school next week aren't you but leon will still be here on a wednesday night yeah every wednesday i'll still be here okay so thank you thank you so much yeah really nice so um lovely to see you please check out our youtube channel if you want to order a soft toy portrait you can find it on my website and please tell your friends because the more people who watch this the more likely we are to carry on because we're having a lovely time but it's no fun without you watching so thank you so much to everyone who's joined in and chatted i hope you've had as much fun as we have and i hope you're going to have a nice sleep now like mr sausages okay right so goodbye everyone it's lovely to see you thanks again for joining thank you